Shalom. <clears throat> First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopefully let I came out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah has commanded you to do so he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel. Which, cons which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line goes back to you being the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Shalom. It's your brother Halaki from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah with another video. And this time I wanted to go into, uh, while I was doing some reading, I was reading uh, Matthew 1, just going through the lineage of Yahweh Shah, and I just got the 18, and the Spirit just came upon me to go into some of these, uh, some of these words, and, uh, you know, because you have these scoffers and these mockers coming out and saying Yahweh Shah is not the actual, the the literal seed of David. He's not, he's not, uh, Mary, uh, did King did King David have sex with Mary, so forth and so on, and it's because they don't understand the words, man. You have to go into the words, and it makes it, it makes it even more clear than it already is. You see. You still got these these Catholics talking about this 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 BS BS doctrine of Mary being an ever virgin and all that madness, man. All that shit is false, man. Joseph had sex with Mary, point blank, period. She's not an ever virgin, man. <laughs> and and if that's the case, how did she bring her other children forth? How did she bring uh? What was the Lord's other brother's name? James and, 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 and Jude. Fourth, man. How did she bring Yahweh Shah's sister forth? If she's a, a virgin forever. You see that madness? But we're going to start right here in uh, Matthew 1. And uh, we're going to start at 18. So it says, Now the birth of Yahweh Shah. Mashiach was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, they were engaged to be married. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. So you have you have the Christian say, Oh, look, she was born, uh Yahweh Shah was born in the Holy Spirit. She's a virgin, so forth and so on. But when you go into the word uh, came together in the Greek, it goes into before they came together, right? That word is synerkomai. It's a, it's, it's a compound Greek word. And it goes on to say, to come together to assemble of conjugal cohabitation. And that's that's off. Because when you go into the word, it goes into, like I said, it's a compound word. It goes into sin, means with. Then you go back and go to the other part of the word, enerkomai. It goes into, to come of persons, to come from one place to another. And use both of persons arriving and those returning to appear, make one's appearance, make one's appearance come before the public during the time of what? The, the wedding feast, man. So before they came to the wedding feast, she was already pregnant with Yahweh Shah. Why? Because Joseph had already went unto her. You see? Now, let's keep going. So it says, what, before they came together to the wedding feast, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit, as it was prophesied. You see? Verse 19 says, what? Then, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Because Joseph, was he was afraid because he knew what the customs was, man. Because we had actual customs that we upheld when it came to, uh, to weddings, man. And I'm going to read from this book, Manners and Customs of, of Bible Times, man. And it goes into the wedding feast. And it, and it tells you exactly what the customs were that had to be kept for, the, for this thing to be solidified, man. So now let's read it real quick. It says what? So the wedding feast. It says the groom and the bride entered under a canopy when they arrived. And this book is by uh, Salaki. This book is by uh, Ralph Gower. You see, Ralph Gower, you can go get it off Amazon. This is, uh, so it says the wedding feast. The groom 
the groom and bride entered under a canopy when they arrived at the house. There they presided over the wedding feast at which a great deal of time was spent in eating and drinking. So when it says they before they came together, so before they came together to this wedding feast and assembled, assembled before the families, she was already pregnant. You see? Because how it was supposed to be, how was how was how it's supposed to go? The bride and the groom come to the wedding feast. They eat, they drink, have a good time with the family. Then they go into the to the to the bed chamber to do what? To consummate the marriage, man. But before all that took place, Joseph had already took Mary. That's why he didn't want to make a public example of her, because if they went into that bed chamber, and she wouldn't have had the tokens of her her virginity. Letting everybody know that she was a virgin, she would have had to be punished according to the law, man. That's why it says he didn't want to make her a public example. Because she would have been punished according to what the law says to do to a woman who is not a virgin, you see, on her wedding night. <laughs> that was a sin punishable by death, man. So it goes on to say, so it says the wedding feast. Uh, they were they were eating and drinking. So it says what well, at the wedding in Cana, Yahweh Shah provided one hundred twenty, one hundred twenty, one hundred twenty gallons of wine for the guests. But they had already drunk so much wine that the person in charge thought it was a pity that the excellent new wine should have been left to the end when the people could not appreciate it. So it says what Fest festivities often lasted seven days, perhaps even longer. The guests were there to witness. That the marriage had been consummated. That the marriage had been consummated. What is what what does consummated mean? Here's the definition of consummate. Make a marriage or relationship complete by having sexual intercourse. You hear that? So these people were there to be witnesses of what took place. After the consummation of the marriage. So it goes on to say in the book. It says what? Guests were there to witness. That the marriage had been consummated. The blood stained covers. Were shown to demonstrate. That the bride had been a virgin. But how could that. So. so with that being said. If Joseph had already popped. Mary. There's no way she could have had the what? The tokens of virginity. So that means what? She would have had to be made, made a public example. That's why he was trying to put her away privately, man. He was trying to put her away secretly. So she wouldn't have to suffer that fate. Because when you go back into the law, real quick, it tells you what happens <laughs> when a woman goes off and uh, is... Not a virgin of her wedding night, man. So we're going to go to Deuteronomy 22. And we're going to start at uh, 13. And it says, man. If any man take a wife. And go in unto her. And hate her. He goes into a half sex with her. And he, and he hate her. And it says what? And give occasions of speech against her. And bring up an evil name upon her. And say. I took this woman. And when I came to her, I found her not a maid. You see that? He's, he's basically saying she wasn't a virgin when I went into her. Verse 15 says what? Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city of the elders slightly, unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. And lo, he hath given act occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. You hear that? And what, and what was going to be on that cloth? Blood, man. You see, to show that she was a virgin when she was taken on her wedding night. This would not have been possible if Joseph and Mary went into that, uh, that that bed chamber after the wedding feast. Why? Because he had already taken her before the ceremony, man. So now it goes on to say, verse 18. 
And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. And they shall immerse him in an, in an hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel because he have bought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. Like, you know, these women, all women were supposed to be virgins when we got them, man. And that's what it's going back to in the kingdom of heaven. It says what? And she shall be his wife and he may not put her away all his days. You stuck with that woman, man. You see, forever. Verse 20 says what? But if this thing be true and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel. You hear that? So if that cloth with that blood on it is not found for the damsel, which would have happened in Joseph and Mary's case. What, what was going to happen? Verse 21. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. And what are they going to do? And the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she died. That is what would have happened if Joseph and Mary would have went to that wedding feast and went into that bedchamber to consummate the marriage and they would have came out with no blood on those sheets. Mary would have been put to death, man. This is why Joseph said he didn't want to make her a public example because this is what would have happened. She would have been punished according to the law, man. So Deuteronomy 22 and 21 says what? Then they shall bring out the damsel. You see? Which would have been Mary if they, if they hadn't found that blood on, the, on those sheets. To the door of her father's house. And the men of her city shall stone her with stones. That she die. Because she have wrought folly in Israel. To play the whore in her father's house. So shall thou put evil away from among you. So it's an evil thing for a woman not to be a virgin in her father's house. You see? This is what would have happened to Mary if... They would have tried to uh, consummate the marriage and no blood would have been found on the sheets, man. They would have took it as she played, she played the whore in her father's house and she would have been put to death by way of stoning, man. This is why it says in Matthew 1 and 20, I mean, 19, it says what? Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example. We just read how, how that was going to take place by stoning at the gates of the city. Oh, was it the gates of the post of her father's house? Oh, yeah. The door of a father's house. <laughs> you see? That would have been the public example, man. For all the people in the village to see. Why? To show you what not to do in your father's house. That's the public example, man. So now we read on. Matthew 1 and 19. Then Joseph, her her husband, being a just man and not willing to, put her, to make her a public example, was minded to put her away properly. He wanted to hide her. Verse 20 goes on to say what? verse 20 says but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the lord appeared unto him in a dream saying joseph thou son of david now here we go now when you go read up in the in the chapter it tells you that that king i'm not king david that joseph is a descendant of king david and this is what makes Shah the son of david you see so it says what well, joseph thou son of david fear thou not Unto thee, it's like, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go into this word son, man. So when you go into this word son, in the Greek, it says what? Joseph, thou son of David, right? Thou son, a son, rarely used for young for the young of animals. Generally used of the offspring of men. You hear that? Generally used of the offspring of men. So, so Joseph was an offspring of King David. Now, you got this, this, this clown vocab talking about, was he a direct a descendant of David? Yes, through that seed line. You see? And this is what made Jehovah Shah the, the son of David. Because, once again, this clown vocab just said, did they, uh... Did David have did David literally have sex with Mary? Come on, man. He was a descendant of King David, man. And that's why that lineage is written in Matthew 1. To show you how that worked. So 
So it goes on to say, in a restricted sense, the male offspring, one born by a father and of a mother. Verse, verse D. <laughs> uh, uh, D, it says what? In a wider sense, a descendant, one of the posterity of anyone, the children of Israel, sons of Abraham, you see? So let's go into this word posterity. What does posterity mean, man? It said all future generations of people. It goes on to say archaic. You see, it says what? The descendants of a person. So Joseph was a descendant of who? King David. Who and uh, who did Joseph bring forth? He brought forth Yahawashah, which made Yahawashah a what? A descendant of David. Descendants, heirs, successors, offspring through his father Joseph, man. A person's child of children, children, family. You hear that? Progeny, man. A descendant or the descendants of a person. Who is Joseph in, who is Joseph and Yahweh Shah descendants of? King David. You see? Through that royal sea line, man. Issue. Oh man, come on with that, that madness. That seed. So seed, you know what seed is, man. It goes into sperm, man. That this is how it works. And this is from Google, man. And this is why we, hey, we, we was we was trained to go into these words, man. So now we got the word son. So it says what? Joseph, thou son of David. So if Joseph, the father of Yahweh Shah, was the son of David, that, that makes Yahweh Shah a son of David. So it goes on to say, fear not to take unto thee, marry thy wife, for that which is, which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Now let's get this word conceived as well, man. You get that word conceived, it goes into what? Where is it? Conceived. Strong's G, 1080. Ganao. Ganao. It goes on to say, of men who have fathered children. Of men who have fathered children. Who is the man that fathered Yahweh Shai? Joseph, man. To be born. To be begotten. What does begotten mean? Typically of a man. Sometimes of a man and a woman bring a child into existence. By the process of reproduction. To father. To sire. To spawn. Create. Reproduce. Procreate. Of people or animals produce young and reproduce through the act of what? Sex, man. Mary was not a virgin. You see? So now let's go back. These people are goofy, man. So now, all right, let's move on. So we got, let's, matter of fact, let's read Matthew 1 and 20 one more time. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear thou not unto thee. It's like, fear not to take unto thee, marry thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. He was prophesied to come, right? Verse 21 says what? And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashah, for he shall save his people from their sins. You hear that? Joseph shot Yahawashah into Mary's stomach, man, through the act of sex. We got the words to prove it. Through the Holy Spirit of Yahabashim Yahawashah. Now let's move on. Let's get Romans. One, we'll start at one. Paul, a servant of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of the Mosiah. Verse two, which he promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. You can go all through the New Testament and it's like the Old Testament and see where Yahweh Shah was prophesied to come. You see. Jacob prophet, prophesied of Yahweh Shah. Moses prophesied of Yahweh Shah. Isaiah. You see? 
the prophets prophesied of Yahweh shall come in, man. So Romans 1 and 2, it says what? Matter of fact, let's get that in uh, Isaiah, Isaiah real quick. So Isaiah 9 and uh And we can get this one too. Isaiah 9 and 6, it says what? This is talking about Yahweh Shah right here. For unto us a child is born, that child was Yahweh Shah. Unto us a son is given, that son is Yahweh Shah. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called the shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor, the mighty power, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. You see? You see, verse 7 says what? Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah of hosts will perform this. You see that? This is what the apostle Paul was talking about. Yahweh Shah being prophet of who? Of the prophets of old. What the other one is? Is that Isaiah 6? I think that's the one I was looking for. Oh, man. I was slipping. Yup. Isaiah 7. And 14, therefore, yep, we'll start at, we'll start at 13, Isaiah 7 and 13, and he said, hear, hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to, to weary men, but will ye weary my power also? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and, sh and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means the Most High is with us, man. That's what happened between Joseph and Mary. She was a virgin when he got with her and she conceived. Yahweh shot in the womb. By what? Through, by way of the act of sex, man. So let's go back to our Romans 1. Just giving you a few to show you what the Apostle Paul was talking about. So Romans 1 and 1. Paul, a servant of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of the Most High, which he promised before by his prophets in the... Come, which he promised before... So like Romans 1 and 2. Which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Now, how was it possible that he was made of the seed of David? Because his father, Joseph, was of the seed of David. He was a direct descendant of the lineage of King David. Once again, let's go into these words. Let's get this word seed, man. Let's get this word seed. In the Greek, it goes into what? Sperma. Strong's G, 4690, sperma. Sperma. You already know what that is, man. It's sperm. You see? After the seed of David, according to the flesh. Now, we're going to get to the point. It says, the semen, viral, the product of this semen, seed, children, offspring, progeny. You see that? That's that word progeny, man. So Yahweh Shah is the progeny of King David, a descendant or descendants of a person, animal, or plant offspring. You see that? Offspring, children, young, family, brood, issue, descendants, successors, heirs, stock. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Lineage, man. Posterity. Look at that word, lineage. Lineal descent from an... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Lineal descent from an ancestor 
ancestry or pedigree. Do you hear it? Lineal. What does the word lineal mean? Oh my goodness. Lineal. In a direct line of descent or ancestry. Come on, man. <laughs> How clear can we make it? Yahweh is a direct descendant. You see? A direct descendant of King David. David. Through what? A lineal descent, man. In a direct line of descent or ancestry, man. And that was all made possible through who? His father, Joseph. You see? <laughs> Letting you know that Yahweh Shah was made through the act of sex. But just to show, hey, he's a, he's of the seed of David, man. He's the son of David. So it goes on to say, family, tribe, posterity. We just got these words, man. Posterity, one more time. All future generations of people are kegged. The descendants of a person. This is what makes Yahweh Shah the son of David. He's a descendant, man. That's what that's talking about. It ain't talking about King David actually having sex with Mary, man. But you, you goofy ass nigga. You see? Yahweh Shah is a descendant. That's what Matthew 1 is going through. One all the way down to it starts to talk about how Yahweh Shah was conceived. It's talking about his lineage, man. Starting with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and it goes down through the lineage, man, and shows you how Yahweh Shah is, di is di directly related to King David, man. You see? Not no immaculate conception, that madness, man. So that's that's it on that. Let's go to uh let's go to Luke, man. Let's go Luke 1. <laughs> And we'll go down to 30. Luke 1 and 30, what does it say? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with the Most High. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. We just got that word conceive, man. You see? Let's get it one more time. Hold up. <laughs> so it goes into something different. Oh, but it takes you you get the point, man. Conceive, it goes right it go right into it. You see? Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, yup, through the act of sex. So it goes on to say, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yahweh Shai. And he shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai shall give unto him the throne of his father David. You see that? And what makes David his father? If you could receive it, he was King Solomon before. Yahweh Shah was King Solomon. But now as Yahweh Shah, he's a direct descendant of David, which makes David his father, man. All the way down the line to Yahweh Shah. Verse 33 says what? He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. What does this go back to, man? It goes back to a promise the Most High made unto King David. You see, that you will have his seed <laughs> sit on the throne forever. And Yahweh Shah is going, he, he, Yahweh Shah is the one that's going to fulfill that prophecy. Let's get that real quick. Let's get 2 Samuel 7. We're going to start at 12, man. And it goes on to say, And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. You hear that? This is the most I talk to King David. He said he's going to sleep with his fathers. His fathers meaning who? His ancestors, man. You see? 
and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, your ancestors. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, you see, by lineal descent, and I will establish his kingdom. First, it happened with who? Solomon. You see? Matter of fact, before we move any further, let's get that word seed in the Hebrew. Huh. See, it goes to Zerah. Seed, sowing, offspring. A sowing seed, semen, viral. Offspring, descendants, posterity, children. You hear that? Letting you know that this is physical, man. Well, no, ain't no such thing as an immaculate conception, man. Yahweh Shah was born just like the rest of us was born, man. Through our fathers having sex with our mothers, man. And we came forth. You see that? The fill he's he's the fill he's he's the physical son of David, man, in the flesh. So it goes on to say verse uh 13. Matter of fact, it says what which shall proceed out of thy bowels. Let's get word bowels too. Bowels. Internal organs, organs, inward parts, bowels, intestines, bellies. Uh, look at that. Organs of procreation. Organs of procreation, man. You already know what that is. So it goes on to say, uh, it says, now I will establish his kingdom. He will build a house for my name. You hear that? He will build a house for my name, which King Solomon did. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. King Solomon's kingdom wasn't established forever, man. King Solomon reigned for 40 years. After that, he died and he slept with his fathers, which are his ancestors. You see? We just read in Luke 1 that Yahweh Shah's kingdom is going to be established forever because this is the most high prophesying of Yahweh Shah coming to sit on the throne of King David forever, man. You see? Verse 14 says what? I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of and with the stripes of the children of men. Now we know that King Solomon went off by worshiping the idols of his wives, man. You see, that caused King Solomon to go off. When Yahweh Shai came, he committed no sins. So why did Yahweh Shai have to be chastened with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men? Because he was paying for his sins. That he committed when he was King Solomon. You see? Because King Solomon a hey, King Solomon died in peace. You see? Verse 15 says what? But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took him from Saul, whom I put away from before who, who I put away before thee, and thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever. Before thee, thy throne shall be established forever. And how is that going to be made possible? Through the son of David, man. Yahweh Shah. That's how this is going to come to pass. You see that? This man who's, who's, uh, who's, uh, the sin goes directly back to King David. He's going to come back to the earth to take the throne of King David and sit upon that throne forevermore. So the most I ate, so this prophecy can be fulfilled. So the most I will not be made a liar. You see that? Verse 17 says what? All according to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. You hear that? So the most I told King David what, was, what it was going to be. And that's what's going to happen, man. So that lets us know. Ain't no such thing as an immaculate conception because Yahweh Shai had to come from the direct seed line of King David for this to be fulfilled. If it didn't happen, if an angel came down in the prayer name, Mary, how the hell is how, how, how the hell is Yahweh Shai the son of David? See, you Christians are out of your damn minds, man. We got all the words to prove you that it was it was a direct lineal descent through something physical, man. Not this fairy tale that you people have made up in your minds, man. You cleaving unto that bullshit. 
You see? Let's get this last one and I'll wrap it up after this, man. This is Psalms 89. And we we'll jump to 34. It says what? Psalms 89 and 34. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is going out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever and is thrown as the sun before me. How is that going to be made possible? Through the Lord and Savior, Yahweh shall coming back to sit upon that throne. As the seed of David. As is prophesied, man. It says, as the sun before him, man. And the most I told you, the sun is never going to be done away with. As it told you in the prophecy, what, what, what Nathan told King David is what? That throne is going to be established forever. The same thing is reiterated in, in, in Luke chapter 1, man. That Yahweh Shah's throne is going to be an everlasting throne, man. It tells you that. It tells you the same thing in Daniel chapter 7. That his throne is ever—he going to have an everlasting dominion. Who is that promised to? The seed of David, the son of David, man. Verse 37 says what? It shall be established forever as the moon <laughs> and as a faithful witness in heaven. Salah. You hear that? Matter of fact, I wrap it up on that Daniel, man. You Christians are out of your damn minds, man. What is that? Yes, sir. <laughs> Verse 13 says what? Daniel said. Yep. Daniel 7 and 13, it says what? I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the, with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Now, this is what, what Daniel was seeing is when Yahweh was taken back up into Acts chapter uh, 1, man. He was taken back into the heavens by way of those chariots, the so-called UFOs, and he was, he was bought and presented before the Heavenly Father Yahweh. And what happened <laughs> when he was presented? Verse 14 says what? And there was given him dominion and glory. And a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His domain is an everlasting domain which shall not pass away. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. And what does that fulfill? The promise and covenant that the Most High made with King David. That his seed will sit upon that throne forevermore. Who's going to fulfill that prophecy? The son of David, Yahweh Shai, man. Point blank period. Yahweh Shah is a direct descendant, a physical descendant of King David through the act of sex between Joseph and Mary. As it is written, man, thus saith Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. So with that, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rekakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful that let I came out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah has commanded you to do, so you can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And you Israelites who are scattered abroad, which may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line goes back to you being a so called black, Hispanic, and Native American. Shalom.